Welcome to the lecture on approximation algorithms using random sampling and randomized rounding of LPs. My name is Rasmus Pei. We're going to look at two case studies. First, weighted set cover, and then we are going to study weighted version of max set. We're going to see three different approaches, random assignment baseline, how this can be de-randomized, and a solution obtained by rounding linear programs. In the weighted set cover problem, we are given a collection of sets over some ground set. So let's consider these six sets and the elements inside of them. The objective is to find a subcollection, that is a subset of the set of sets that covers all the points in the ground set. So for example, uh, here we could choose uh, three sets to form a subcollection and we see that they include all of the points. And what we want to achieve is the minimum possible weight of, of all the selected sets. So the input includes the m sets and also corresponding weights w1 through wm. And the objective is to minimize a sum wi times xi, where xi indicates whether set number i is included um, in the subcollection or not. We also need uh, a constraint to express that everything is covered. So to this end, we introduce notation bj. So bj is going to be the indices of the sets that cover element i. So for each i, we need the sum of these xi's to be at least one. That means that i is covered. Okay, and of course, xi should be either zero or one because either we want to cover something or not. So that's the integer programming formulation, but we cannot solve that efficiently. So we relax it uh, as usual to an LP formulation by just requiring xi to be in the interval zero to one. So the hope is that solving the LP will help us get a good solution to the uh, original integer um, programming formulation. And again, we are going to be using rounding. Uh, the, so the deterministic rounding approach from that we saw uh, earlier would uh, look as follows. So let's suppose we have an optimal solution to the LP x star. So then we need to round up to one if x star is, is big enough um, and otherwise down to zero. So the question is what is big enough? And it turns out that this really depends on how many sets can include an element. So let's uh, define f as the maximum uh, number of sets that include an element uh, j, so the maximum of size of bj over j. Um, and then uh, it's not very hard to see, and the details are in the book, that if we uh, round up whenever uh, xi star is at least 1 over f, then uh, we are going to get a valid solution, a valid set cover. So since we round up to a value that is at most f times larger um, than, than the LP solution, the worst rounding is intuitively that we round from exactly 1 over f up to, up to 1. And this means that we are going to get a, an f times more expensive set cover compared to the LP, uh, which is a lower bound on the, um, on the optimal solution. So this, this is an f approximation. However, it's possible to do better if f is large. Um, and one way of doing this is by using randomized rounding. So the idea now is that we don't choose uh, whether to round up or down um, deterministically, but rather we round up and down with certain probabilities. Okay. And it turns out to be easiest to write the probability to round down. So a good choice here is to round down with probability 1 minus xi star to some power that is basically the logarithm of n. I've used five times the logarithm just for as an example, but the constant here doesn't really matter that much. Okay, so now we have a randomized rounding approach. So the question is, what can we say about the properties? Would it actually work? 
So let's analyze the randomized rounding procedure for, for Z cover. So this is uh, how we round again. So there are basically two aspects to this. So first of all, do we actually get a valid covering? Um, and in order to analyze this, it's relevant to look at the sum of these Xi's. So it has to be at least one, but if it's actually zero, then we fail, even if it's just for a single J. Okay, so, um, so what is the probability for a given J that this sum is zero? Well, by the choice of the randomized uh, rounding procedure, it's the product over all uh, i in, in bj that xi is equal to x, uh, sorry, xi hat is equal to zero. And by definition, uh, this probability is one minus xi star to the power five log n. And we can uh, put the parentheses like this. Um, and now we are almost done because we know that the sum of these xi stars is greater than or equal to one. So this means that we can upper bound this by a number that's exponentially small in the five, uh, five log n. And this gives us a polynomially small uh, error probability. And the details are left to an exercise. Okay, of course, this was just for a single j. So what's the probability that there exists a j uh, such that this is the case? Well, we just sum all the probabilities. Basically, we upper bound the probability that such a j exists by the sum of the probabilities, and it's again less than one over a polynomial in n. Next, we need to consider the approximation factor. So what can we actually say about the, the weight of the, of the chosen set cover? So sum of wi xi hat. Um, but of course, this is a random variable. So all we can hope to do is bound, say, the expectation. So let's try to analyze the expectation. So by linearity of expectation, we can write this as the sum of probabilities multiplied by uh, wi. So this was linearity of expectation. And now we can use the expression that we have above for the probability that xi is equal to one. And we can actually, um, we can upper bound that by five log n times xi star. Okay, so that's uh, pretty easy to see. And then, um, yeah, just moving five log n outside, we get an upper bound of, um, of that times the, uh, value of the um, linear program, the optimal value of the linear program, which is again a lower bound on, on opt. So that is, we get an approximation factor of uh, 5 log n. Um, so this was just expected, but we can actually get this for sure if we just repeat this whole thing until we get, you know, something that is within a small factor of the LP lower bound. And by Markov's inequality, we are going to succeed with constant probability each time we try. So the expected number of attempts we need is going to be constant. Ah, so a small correction to the bound I wrote before, it can actually be replaced by one over E, which gives an even, even better bound. So let's turn to our second case study, which is the max set problem in a, in a weighted version. So Set has these uh, has an input that consists of clauses of literals. So, for example, this clause is satisfied if x three or x seven is true, or if x thirteen is is false. Okay. And in general, there are m some number m of these uh, these clauses with any number of literals in each, and we have corresponding weights w one through w m. So the goal is to choose values for the variables x1 through xn in order to maximize the weight of the satisfied clauses. So if we define yi to be 1 if and only if clause i is satisfied, uh, it's the sum of wi times yi over all i. Okay, so a baseline solution, a really, really stupid one, is uh, just assign all the values at random. And it turns out that this solution is actually not not too bad. So, okay, 
So let's use zero for false and one for true from now on. So we just randomly assign either zero or one to each of the variables. So what can we say about the, the weight we achieve? So the sum of wi times yi. So again, like before, this is a random variable, so, but we can analyze its expectation. So let's uh, use linearity of expectation again. So we write it as, um, as a sum over all the clauses of the expected value of wi times yi. And since yi is an indicator random variable, this is just wi times the probability that yi is, is 1, or rather the pro that is the probability that clause i is satisfied. So now this probability depends on the length of a clause, so the number of literals in, in a clause. So let's de define li as the number of literals in clause i. And it's easy to see that we kind of have l chances of satisfying clause i, and each of them succeeds with probability 1 half. So the probability of not satisfying is 2 to the minus li. So the probability of satisfying is 1 minus that. So the expectation is exactly the sum wi times 1 minus 2 to the minus li. And that is, since li is at least 1, this is at least half times the sum of the weights. And since the sum of the weights is an upper bound on opt, we have a half approximation. So very often these randomized uh, rounding techniques can be de-randomized. Um, and we're going to illustrate it here, um, showing how we were to de-randomize the random choices that we just saw. So the goal, of course, is to get something at least as good as the expectation. So the idea is to look at something called conditional expectations. So conditional expectations are the expectations that you get by fixing a variable to some value. So we can look at the expected value of ei times yi conditioned on xi, x1 for example, being either 0 or 1. And it's easy to, uh, to compute this expectation for a given formula, and we simply choose the value of x1 that maximizes the expectation. And then we repeat with x2, x3, and so forth. And the claim is that this doesn't decrease the expectation at all. Okay, so we are sure to choose x1 such that we get an expectation that is at least as big as the previous one. And to see this, simply write the expectation as the weighted sum of the expectation conditioned on x1 being 0 and 1. So the expectation is simply the average of these two conditional expectations, which means that one of them has to be at least as large. Next, we're going to see how to improve on this baseline using randomized rounding of linear programs. So let's define pj to be the set of positive literals or variables in, in clause j, and nj to be the set of negative variables in, in clause j. And also, we're going to introduce some helper variables to uh, express the uh, integer program. So set i in 0, 1 would simply be the indicator variable saying whether clause j is satisfied. Okay. So we can write up an integer program now, where we say that the goal is to maximize the weighted sum of satisfied clauses, so that's just w, j, z, j. And we want to make sure that z, j is consistent with the xi's. Um, so in particular, this means that for every clause, there has to be at least one satisfied uh, literal. And the number of satisfied literals can be written as the sum of the xi over pj plus 1 minus uh, xi over the nj's. So this was the integer program, but of course we can relax it to a linear program, but by not requiring uh, xi and zj to be integer, but instead be in the whole interval 0 to 1. So now these uh, values we can interpret as probabilities. So zj can be interpreted as a probability that clause j is going to be true, and xi is going to be interpreted as a probability that we want to set xi equal to 1. So this suggests a randomized rounding algorithm. Um, 
in which we uh, take an optimal solution to the linear program, so call that x star, and we set uh, xi hat to be one with probability xi star. Okay. So the question is, you know, does does this work? Does it actually give us a linear uh, a solution that is uh, comparable to the one uh, in value to the one given by the linear programming. So to analyze this, we uh, look at the probability that our clause is not satisfied. Um, and by definition, the only way that you're not going to be satisfied is that if, is if all of the literals are not satisfied. So this is this uh, product of probabilities. Now to make this more manageable, we use the arithmetic geometric mean inequality, which says that we can basically replace all the things we are multiplying with their uh, arithmetic mean, so the average, as long as we uh, take that to the power, which is the number of, of terms. So this is the AG mean inequality. And now we basically just have the sum of all the XI stars uh, and some of them negated. And by the linear constraint, we know that this sum is at most lj minus zj. So we can simplify the probability like this. So now this was the probability that clause j was not satisfied. So we need to reverse this when we compute the expected weight of a router solution. So this is what we are really interested in. So we are going to write this like before as the sum of weights times the probability that yi is, is 1. And um, well, we just bounded the probability that y i is zero. So we can uh, use that to lower bound this probability as one minus the probability that is zero. And now we can use kind of standard inequalities to uh, lower bound this expression as wj times one minus one over e. So that means that we have something that's at least one minus one over e times the LP optimum, which is again an upper bound on opt. Okay. And here we're using that set j star is less than or equal to 1. Even better algorithms exist, and you can read about those in the book. We're not going to cover them in the lecture.